Hello everyone, happy Holy Week. Um, Holy Week is upon us. And I was reflecting the past day or so um, on what the difference has been in the year. Last year we did our sacred Easter Triduum uh, and we did do it, uh, but we did it during a stay at home um, advisory. So there was no live uh, masses or services. Um, there was no chrism mass last year and yesterday I did go to the cathedral for, to the chrism mass to receive the newly blessed oils. And we, though limited uh, in capacity this year, uh, will be celebrating the Triduum and Easter Sunday uh, as we have been open for masses since the end of May. So there is a big difference than what we had last year, uh, and we're grateful to that. We're not quite to back to what we always had, and I don't think we ever will be back to what we always had because we're in a different world uh, and uh, we move forward. This year, uh, as we do every year, the Triduum unfolds for us these significant saving acts of God, the ultimate salvation for all of us. Um, and we start with the Holy Thursday uh, liturgy of the Mass of the Lord's Supper when we recall when Christ gave us that gift of the Eucharist, that gift that has his presence with us at all times. We celebrate Mass every week. We celebrate that supper every week and sometimes daily. And that gift brings us hope and brings us the true presence of Christ and the real presence of Christ on earth. Right after that happened in history, he was betrayed by one of his disciples and arrested and put to death. And we commemorate that on Good Friday. Uh, we don't um, we do don't do that as far as reenacting because we commemorate Good Friday in light of the resurrected Lord. We do that in Easter like because Easter and Good Friday only happen once. Um, and we commemorate it and we remember it but we do it in light of the resurrection. So we think about that loving act that God had given us uh, through allowing his son to suffer death only to be able to rise to new life so that we can share in that new life. On Saturday evening, we celebrate the Easter Vigil where we commemorate that great Easter response of God to bring forth his son into the world uh, as the resurrected Lord. It's traditionally the time too when people are either baptized or received into the church uh, who uh, have expressed the desire to become a part of the church. This year, uh, we're blessed to have three catechumens and one uh, candidate who's already baptized but will be received into the church. So um, on at the Easter vigil, vigil, I will have the honor to baptize Alexander, Vincent, and Taylor into the church and to receive Jackie into the church and to confirm all of them and give them their first Holy Communion. And it shows life in our parish. It shows that people want to join us. It shows that we continue to grow every year. We're very grateful to um, all who have made this possible, our RCIA team, uh, our staff um, and have made this uh, such a, a beautiful experience for our parish. So we're excited that at the Easter Vigil, uh, after a year of, of kind of looking at um, 
sickness and death and, and uh, things that showed fear. Uh, people having this freedom to come into our church um, and to accept the Lord um, as their Savior and to live that in their lives. So I ask you to continue to pray for these four people who um, have been on this journey as they come into the church. Again, with a year that has been so filled with fear, so filled with the unknown, so filled with change, um, what we really, really celebrate on Easter is the new life that God gives us, not just once, but every day. Every day we have that chance to um, wake up and stand up and say, this is a new day. And God continues to bring new life into us uh, and give us that chance for new life. And we especially celebrate that at Easter where the risen Lord brings that hope to the people of that time, but really for ages and ages to come. So on behalf of our entire parish here at St. Matthew's, uh, we wish you all a blessed Easter. Um, it might be a difficult Easter. It might still be frustrating uh, for what uh, restrictions are out there, but uh, the restrictions have been lightened a great deal. And we're now ready, um, as we were last year when we were fully in the stay-at-home mode, um, to be able to continue to acknowledge Christ's saving act in the act of Easter. And so, as a parish, we gather in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Lady, comforted the afflicted, pray for us. St. Joseph, during this year of St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Matthew the Evangelist, pray for us. On behalf of all of us, we wish you a very blessed Holy Week and a blessed Easter. Sign-ups for Holy Thursday's Mass of the Lord's Supper, Good Friday's Passion, and the Great Easter Vigil are now available on Sign Up Genius along with Easter morning masses. Call the parish to sign up if you do not have a computer. Thank you.